Our first joke of the day is a joke about a barber shop. A young boy enters a barber shop and the barber whispers to his customer, this is the dumbest kid in the world. Watch while I prove it to you. The barber puts a dollar bill in one hand and two quarters in the other, then calls the boy over and asks, which do you want, son? Then the boy takes the quarters and leaves. What did I tell you? said the barber and laughs. That kid never learns. I have been doing this for weeks, but this kid is dumb. Later, when the customer leaves, he sees the same young boy coming out the ice cream parlor. Hey son, come here. May I ask you a question? Why did you take the quarters instead of the dollar bill? The boy with a big smile on his face licked his cone and replied, because the day I take the dollar, the game is over. Our next joke is about a clever lawyer and a police officer. A lawyer runs a stop sign and gets pulled over by a deputy. He thinks he is smarter than the deputy because he is a lawyer and decides to have some fun with the deputy. The deputy says, license and registration, please. What for? Says the lawyer, you didn't stop at the sign. The lawyer says, I slowed down, no one was coming. You did not stop, says the deputy. What's the difference? Ask the lawyer. The difference is you must stop. That's the law. Lawyer says, if you show me the difference between slow down and stop, I'll give you my license and registration. If not, you let me go without a ticket. That sounds fair. Please exit your vehicle, sir, the deputy says. At this point, the deputy takes out his baton and starts beating the lawyer and says, do you want me to stop or just slow down? The following joke is about a big game hunter and his mother-in-law. A big game hunter took his wife and against his will, his mother-in-law with him on a trip to a big five game farm. They had only been there for a day when the hunter and his mother-in-law had a huge fight and she decided to go on a walk by herself. Later that day, they noticed that the mother-in-law did not return yet. His wife was frantic and begged him to go look for her. He took his rifle and he set off with his wife through the bush. A few hours of searching and they came across the mother-in-law lying flat on her back with a huge lion standing spread-eagled over her. The wife frantically screams at the hunter as he stood and watched for a while. Are you going to do anything? No, replied the hunter. That lion got himself into this mess. <laughs> In our next joke, a mother-in-law try to resolve a family issue. Here is the best story about a mother-in-law and an affair ever. So this mother-in-law came to visit her daughter and son-in-law. But on her arrival, she noticed the husband being very annoyed. What's wrong, she asked. The husband explained that he was on a business trip and sent her daughter, his wife, an email to say that he will be home a day earlier. But when he arrived home, he found his wife in bed with another man. It's over, we are getting a divorce, the man said. So, the mother-in-law said that her daughter would never do that, as she educated her better and something sounds wrong, but said that she will quickly go find out what's going on. So, after a few minutes, she came to her son-in-law laughing, I told you something must be wrong and that she would never do that. The mother-in-law then said, but she never got your email. Have you ever heard a joke about a pit bull? Well, here is one. You ever seen a funeral procession with two hearses? Crazy, right? Well, this woman witnessed this one morning. There was even a woman walking her pit bull calmly behind the procession, followed by a massive line of female mourners. Curiosity got the better of her, so she approached the woman with the dog. Excuse me, she said. My condolences, but this is like no funeral I've ever seen. What happened here? The woman with the dog sighed. My husband's in the first hearse. My dog, well, he wasn't happy with him during an argument with me. After a beat of silence, the woman said, and the second hearse is for my mother-in-law. She tried to help her son, the woman said flatly. After another beat of silence, the woman asked, can I borrow your dog? The woman with the pit bull blurted out, honey, you will have to get in the line. <laughs> so, 
What is a drunken husband supposed to do when he gets home? Our next joke is trying to explain. This guy got home very late one evening after drinking with some friends. When he was close to his house, he turned off the headlights, put the car in neutral, and coasted up to his house. He entered very quietly, took off his shoes, and closed the front door very quietly. Carrying his shoes, he tiptoed up the stairs and into his bedroom. At that point, his wife rolled over and shouted, Where the hell have you been till four in the morning? His friends later told him that he should take another approach. When nearing your house, his friend said, turn the headlights to bright, gun the engine and roar up the house. After you squeal to a stop, get out, slam the car door. Now you must slam the door to your house and tromp up the stairs singing, I'm in the mood for love. It is guaranteed that the wife will be fast asleep. In the following joke, this guy has some serious family issues. A man walks into a bar and tells the bartender, give me a double shot of whiskey now. Everything okay? The bartender asks. No, says the man. I just found out my brother is gay and he's been secretly dating my best friend. Oh man, says the bartender. That's messed up. A few days later, the same man enters the bar again. Give me a double of what I had last time. And the man quickly drinks both shots. You, okay? Rough week. The bartender asks again. Oh yes, my 20-year-old son came out that he is gay. He stole his sister's boyfriend. Now my daughter won't stop crying. The weekend the same man came in. Just bring me a bottle of whiskey. The barman shook his head, asks. Doesn't anyone in your family prefer a woman? The man replied. Yes, apparently my wife does. <laughs> blonde jokes are plentiful, but here is a joke about a very clever blonde. A blonde walk into a bank to get a loan. I need to borrow $100 for the month, she says. The banker takes her information and runs her credit but can't find a credit report. I'm sorry, he says, but in the absence of a credit record, we'll have to charge 20% interest on the loan, so full payment will be $120 for the month. That's fine, says the blonde. You will also need to give something valuable for collateral on the loan, says the banker. How about my Ferrari? The banker nearly fainted. Okay, he says. I'll print out the papers. A month later, she returned with the money for the loan. The banker asks the blonde, why did you use a $200,000 car as collateral on a $100 loan? The blonde says. I went on holiday. Where else can I safely park a Ferrari for a month for $20? <laughs> so, this young geeky student got himself a bicycle. Let's find out where and how he got it in the following joke. That's a very nice bike you have there, John. Where did you buy it? I didn't purchase it. Susan gave it to me as a gift. As a gift? I always knew she was into you, but this is something else. Why did she give it to you? Well, you see, Mike, yesterday I was strolling in the park, and I saw Susan on this bike. She came to me without saying anything, tossed the bike aside, then she took off all her clothes. Now, you can take whatever you want, John. So I took the bike, said my thanks, and left. Now that was a very good decision, John because her clothes wouldn't fit you. <laughs> in the next joke, this guy got in trouble with the police and a judge need to decide. A riot at the mayor's office. Mayor, this country is bad. Mayor, this country is bad. Mayor, this country is bad. Hey you, what did you just say to the mayor? I said that this country is a disgrace and this country is bad. Well, for that I will arrest you take you to the police station for tonight and tomorrow you can go and explain that to the judge so what are you here for today sir well your honor i was shouting at the mayor's office that this country is bad and that it's a disgrace but i was talking about iran now you are a police officer and should know better than arresting a man for expressing his views about another country for this i am giving you a hefty fine how bad is this you go against our country and I get a fine. I told you this country is bad.
The following joke is about a wife and a statue in her bedroom. Very funny. A woman was in bed with her lover when she heard her husband opening the front door. Hurry, she said. Stand in the corner. She quickly rubbed baby oil all over him, and then she dusted him with talcum powder. Don't move until I tell you to, she whispered. Just pretend you're a statue. What's this, honey? The husband inquired as he entered the room. Oh, it's just a statue, she replied nonchalantly. The Smiths bought one for their bedroom. I liked it so much, I got one for us too. No more was said about the statue, not even later that night when they went to sleep. Around two in the morning, the husband got out of bed, went to the kitchen, and returned a while later with a sandwich and a glass of milk. Here, he said to the statue, eat something. I stood like an idiot at the Smith's for three days, and nobody offered me as much as a glass of water. <laughs> now we have a little Johnny joke about when he was in kindergarten. On the last day of kindergarten, all the children brought presents for their teacher. The florist's son handed the teacher a gift. She shook it, held it up and said, I bet I know what it is. It's some flowers. That's right, shouted the little boy. Then the candy store owner's daughter handed the teacher a gift. She held it up, shook it, and said, I bet I know what it is. It's a box of candy. That's right, shouted the little girl. The next gift was from the liquor store owner's son, little Johnny. The teacher held it up and saw that it was leaking. She touched a drop with her finger and tasted it. Is it wine? She asked. No, said little Johnny. The teacher touched another drop to her tongue. Is it juice? She asked. No, he answered. Finally, the teacher said, I give up. What is it? Little Johnny replied, it's a little puppy. <laughs> the next joke is about three Irish brothers. Oh, those Irish are always hilarious. An Irish man walks into a pub. Give me three beers, please, he said. The bartender brings him three beers and the man proceeds to drink them all. He then orders three more. Sir, says the bartender, you don't have to order three at a time. I can keep an eye on you, and when you get low, I bring you a new one. You don't understand, the man says. I have two brothers, one in Australia and one in the States. We made a vow to each other that every Saturday night we'd still drink together. So right now, my brothers also have three beers, and we drink together. What a wonderful tradition, the bartender says, smiling. So, it goes on for weeks and weeks until one Saturday, he orders only two drinks. I know your tradition, but why only two drinks? Did one brother die? Oh, my brothers are fine, says the man. I just quit drinking. <laughs> so, this farmer had a huge problem with pests, and obviously his mother-in-law. You ever notice how mothers-in-laws have a knack for helping you in the most unexpected ways? Especially when you're facing a crisis like this farmer. His strawberry farm was being overrun by birds. Every morning, he would wake up to a field of half-eaten berries. One Sunday, he found himself at his mother-in-law's house for the usual soul-crushing roast dinner. As he sat there, trying to avoid eye contact and her questionable hairdo when it hit him, Back at the farm, he worked through the night. By sunrise, he had a masterpiece, a scarecrow, a terrifyingly accurate renditions of his mother-in-law, and of course, that hair. The next morning, he placed the scarecrow proudly in the center of his field. The birds were speechless and so shocked, some of them even brought back last year's strawberries. <laughs> in this last joke of the day, we bring you a couple that landed themselves in a mental hospital. John and Sue had both been in politics for a good number of years when they eventually landed up in a mental hospital. One day when they were walking past the hospital swimming pool, John suddenly jumped into the deep end. He sunk to the bottom of the pool. Sue jumped in to save him. She swam to the bottom and pulled John out. When the medical director heard this, he immediately ordered her to be discharged from hospital as he now considered her to be mentally stable. He went to tell Sue the good news. Sue, I have good news and bad news. The good news is, you are being discharged. Since you were able to jump in and save John, I think you've regained your senses. 
The bad news is that John hung himself with his bathrobe belt in the bathroom. I'm sorry, but he's dead. Sue replied, he didn't hang himself. I put him there to dry.